Welcome back to part two of setting up the Power Platform Center of Excellence within a full Dataverse environment as opposed to a Dataverse for Teams environment. So carrying on from part one, where we covered off prerequisites, environment creation, that left us with an environment called the Center of Excellence. So we find ourselves at make.powerapps.com. We're in, in the right context of our center of excellence environment. We've clicked on solutions in the left-hand navigation. And now we're gonna to want to import the core components. Now for many, the core components alone may be enough as you're just dipping your toes into implementing a center of excellence because at its core, it's going to, to set about creating the rich data set that ultimately will allow you to get one, a good handle on what elements of the Power Platform are already in use and allow you to make informed decisions of how you want to proceed going forwards. And it also comes bundled with some apps that you can use for day-to-day -day tasks as well. So the first thing we're gonna do once we're on solutions is we're going to click import solution. We're then going to browse to the uh, extracted COE starter kit zip file that we've already got ahead of time. And we're going to want to make sure that we select the center of excellence core, core components minus the word teams, because that teams one is specific if you're doing this in a dataverse for teams environment. And it's also worth calling out that as of now, they are, they are going to basically read in between the lines, stop focusing on, on being able to do this for Dataverse for Teams environments um, and just have it in full Dataverse production databases. So once we've selected the solution, we're gonna click next. And then the first thing that's going to do is prompt us to ensure that we have available connections for the connectors that are used throughout. The reason it's not done this is because I've already imported this ahead of time, but you're essentially going to go through the connections and anywhere that you've not got an available or not a desirable connection, you can click new connection. It will take you to the connection screen authenticate, and then come back, refresh, and rinse and repeat until you've got all of all, all of the connections for your connectors populated. Just to expand on that a bit further, I will come to powerapps.microsoft.com, we'll sign in. Once we've signed in, we'll make sure we're in the context of our center of excellence environment, which we are. And then I'm going to expand Dataverse and then click on connections. So just to call out, most, most of the connections that you've set up will just require you to, to authenticate to your account, which we've used this administrator one in this case, with a slight exception that the HTTP with Azure AD connection, it could differ from the norm if your tenant is in GCC, GCC high or DOD. But for, for our case, we just had to specify the graph.microsoft.com URL. So we, we even did it https colon forward slash forward slash graph dot microsoft dot com forward slash so in fact if i can find it here if i went to edit that's slightly different to to some of the other connectors that just wanted us to authenticate the account so Coming back, once you've got the connections, you click next, it would then take you to environment variables. Now, again, this is a reduced set of environment variables because we've, we've already 
imported the solution, so it's only prompting us for those envir envir environment variables for which we do not have a value specified. And we will now be able to enter some of these because if this is your first import, some of them do say leave empty on import because you need to get the imported component, so an app in this case, um, before you can specify it. Just to touch on the client secret, if you if you if you are wanting to make use of command center and have your Microsoft three six five messages available in that app, and it would be recommended to store the secret for that app registration in an Azure key vault, you would want to specify the value, the key vault secret reference here. If you're just doing straight up secret, you would specify it here, and this is. Sorry, I, I might have made it out as if this was the application ID of the command center app, but this is actually the application or client ID of the app registration. So leave empty on import again, URL to develop a compliance center canvas app. So we can actually grab some of these. So what we'll do is we'll actually take this opportunity to come to solutions and we'll now kind of walk through as if you needed to change the value of an environment variable that you may have done at the point of import. So once the solution is loaded, we'll click on apps in the left-hand navigation So click on apps. And once this is loaded, we're going to select the app called, I'm gonna go for admin command center or app com command center, sorry, I, I possibly did want this because it's the first time I'll just sign into this one. We can now click on allow. And then if we click on the setup icon here, if you expand out the menu, you'll be able to see what the op name is. And this is where we've got our environment variables. So some of them that we've populated, like the graph URL, because this is a commercial environment, we've just gone with the, the typical graph.microsoft.com. These, this is one of where we could specify the value after the fact for what it's asking for here. I'm just gonna find some of the other ones that we have populated. Is, is your tenant ID, we did populate. You can get that by coming into Azure Active Directory and just copy the tenant ID there. Power App Maker, again, we've just gone for the typical commercial value, so make.powerapps.com. Power Platform Maker Group ID. Now, this depends on your strategy, but it could be recommended to actually have, if we go to teams.microsoft.com, have a collaboration area for makers. So above, above and beyond that group being populated with um, new makers based on certain interactions you do within the center of excellence you may also want to have a kind of forum collaboration space so teams is is a perfect fit for that so you could create a team you're naturally going to get a microsoft 365 group that backs it and you can make use of the object id of that group to populate this environment variable in terms of any others, we specified the typical apps.powerapps.com environment variable. We had admin email. So you've got admin email as an individual. So this one here, you can specify a distribution list. There's certain components of the center of excellence which you cannot make use of a group or distribution list. And that one falls under, in fact, let's search for this. Although 
search is not going to work. Um, individual admin, we've also specified the same. So that's kind of caught up. But what we can now do above and beyond those, because we've already got the, the solution imported, is we can come and fill in some of the others that we didn't do initially. So we've got the comp uh, developer compliance center canvas app. So if we find Although I'm looking for compliance. Center Canvas app. Link to your internal environment request admin app URL. So you can definitely make that one out. And here we would just go to details. I believe it wants the app ID. Well, they just say URL, so I'm actually going to go for this one. But we we can always come in um, and change it after the fact if it needs be. Developer Compliance Center URL. Now, the only annoying thing here is I don't see one that's called Developer Compliance Center app. So I'm just going to, I might leave that one as is for now, but let's just have another, another look at Compliance Center. So we've got access, app catalog. So we know it's a Canvas one, set app permissions, set flow. I'm half tempted to say it's actually the command center one. I might just populate it with that for now, but we can always check um, where it's made use of, just make sure that it, it does do what it needs to. Community URL is optional. Again, a, a team could be quite a handy candidate for that. In command center, we do actually have this that we did in our video series for setting up the center of excellence within a database for teams environment. So here I can come over to app registrations. Uh, we've got the one for the command center. So if you do want to set up the M365 service messages element of the center of excellence, you would, you would ensure that it's got these permissions. And we can start to make use of these values for the for app, app registration to populate the environment variables. I'm going to leave the client um, blank for now, but what I would recommend for that is that you would create a key vault, add the secret within here, and then it's the reference of the key vault that you would want to populate in this one which would negate the need for doing this. If you're not gonna do the key vault, you would want the secret of, of the app registration. So if we come back here, come to certificates and secrets, you would, you would want to have this value in here. And then we would click import, but I'm not going to do that because we've, we've already imported the solution, which we can just see there, center of excellence core components. So that covers off this video. Next, we'll be talking about turning on the various flows that we got as, as part of the core components. And then we'll keep going by validating that the flows are running, the database tables in the solution are being populated. And then we'll move on to actually visualizing that data and populating new entries as we make use of the center of excellence. Thank you for watching. Just a quick update, if you're still watching, I believe for me, the de developer compliance center URL for the Canvas app, that's probably gonna actually be in the compliance area of the center of excellence. So we, we may just not have it at the moment. So I'm gonna leave, leave that uh, blank for now.